And as we said, the Government Employees Pension Fund is the largest institutional investor in Africa with over 1.2 trillion rand in assets and is one of the largest institutional investors in the world. We thought we'd give the fund's principal executive, John Olifant, the opportunity to give its members and stakeholders an update on how things are going. He joins us in studio now live to share his thoughts. John, it's always a pleasure having you in the studio. Mm -hmm. Perhaps just uh, at the outset, starting on the current environment, you are managing to grow your assets under management. And every time you walk into the studio, there's an incredible growth aspect to that. So you're obviously feeling relatively confident in the current environment. Yeah. No, again, thank you again for inviting us and give us an opportunity to reflect on our thinking in relation to the investment strategy of the fund. I must say that we've continuously been having quite a, an excellent um, a recovery. I mean, the post-2008, 2009, I think when I was looking at the numbers in 2009 was the only year that we had a negative return of about 10%. And post that, we have been doing extremely well. Uh, the fund is roughly up about 15% up until the end of April, and that puts us at about 1.2 trillion uh, assets under management. So I think uh, under the current environment, 15% growth, given the size of the GPF, it's reasonably okay. John, mm -hmm. we just wanted to come back to, obviously you do benchmark the fund against a, a, an index which mm -hmm. you construct. Uh, what do you measure the fund against in terms of uh, what you want to achieve from a return perspective? Yeah, I think the most important thing for, for the board is to be able to deliver the promises that are in the GPF rules or, or the law. And uh, as such, the liabilities of the fund, they are our benchmark. And if you look at the growth in liabilities, it's, it's mainly driven by salary increases. And secondly, it's driven by, by um, movements in, in the bond yields and, and, and also driven by, by increases in pensions. So if you look at what has been happening, especially in the inflation-linked bonds, I mean, that has uh, delivered but almost what 16% return that obviously will hurt us a bit but we hedge that by having a significant exposure to inflation linked bonds and that's why I mean if you look at the GPF portfolio I mean compared to other pension funds we've got the largest portfolio of, of inflation linked but bonds. But you've long yeah. been a favor you know you've long favored inflation linked yeah. bonds I think every time we sat on this desk uh, yeah. that's one of the stories that you've been driving home. Yeah I, I mean obviously I mean even when engaged with uh, national treasury we always push for them to issue more inflation linked <laughs> bonds and I think in a defined benefit scheme uh, inflation linked bonds are a very important asset and uh, and obviously if you don't get enough of them you tend to look at other proxy assets and I think if you look at our portfolio we've been driving hard at improving our exposure to infrastructure we've been driving hard at improving our exposure to property sector and you've seen what property has done um, uh, year to date and even last day it was the best performing asset class so we've been in the right asset classes and that really has delivered significant value for the GEPF but I mean if you look at our strategy it takes us a while to to turn the Titanic I mean to transition the portfolio to have the right exposure to the right asset classes John, it's, uh, it's quite a big thing that uh, the property uh, has been an interesting um, play. Uh, mm. We've had a lot of investment managers on, on the show and, and that I interview talking about how it moves down with property yields and it's probably now not a great time to, to be buying property, but it continues to perform. The GPF seems to be very active in the private property market. That's the uh, unlisted sector. Just tell us your thinking around uh, your involvement there. Yeah. Look, I mean, we see pr the building of the GPF portfolio, I mean, it's a journey. I mean, you would know, I mean, the largest property company in South Africa is what, Growth Point? I mean, if you look at their market cap and you look at the GPF, I mean, our property portfolio is sitting at 60 billion. Um, and obviously, there's a disconnect in terms of where valuations are. If you look at the unlisted property sector, it seems to be more attractive than the listed sector. And the GPF has always been driving to have a much bigger exposure to the unlisted sector. And that's why you've seen that the transaction that we've been involved in, the buying of Pareto, increasing our stake in Pareto uh, from, from the ESCOM pension fund, and uh, also the transaction around the waterfront, that has always been part of our strategy to increase our exposure to the unlisted property sector because it, quite, it was a, a price quite reasonably well. So, I mean, obviously it will take us time, but I mean, we are almost there. I mean, we are what, it's sitting at about roughly 5% exposure to, to, to properties, and I think that's reasonably healthy exposure, especially for, for a pension fund as big as the GP. And do you see property mm. continuing with this good performance? Mm. That is asked year after year, and property always mm. surprises on the upside. Look, the property portfolio of the GPF is actually valued conservatively, because 
a significant portion of our exposure it's in the unlisted space and often we conduct independent valuations um, every year when we prepare our financial statements and often and even even in last year they always say you know what we don't we think uh, the listed uh, sector is, is has peaked and they are conservatively valuing our property portfolio but coming back to it the reason why we love property um, yes you can get a bit of capital appreciation but it's rental income so what we need to worry about is vacancy rates and what our views are around that and I think the vacancy rates have been holding up quite nicely and if you look at escalation rates in terms of rental income it's linked to inflation so that income for us it's critical because the pension or looking at the liabilities that we face in the portfolio they are linked to inflation so yes you can have a bit of volatility or a good capital appreciation but for us the key is income. John, we wanted to just ask you, uh, the last time you were on the show, the, the, the fund had just gone over a trillion rand in assets. Mm -hmm. uh, we've now mentioned the 1.25 billion. You, you mentioned... Trillion, trillion. 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 You're <laughs> going to be quickly, quickly corrected on that. Don't throw billions around on this desk when you've got Mr. Olifan sitting 1. there. 1.2 yeah. trillion. Yeah. You've got a, a lot of capital coming in that you've got to deploy. I wanted to know, uh, first of all, what's the sort of structure you use to making those decisions? Because as money's coming in every month, uh, you've got to move a lot of money. You've got to get a lot of, a lot of money invested very quickly in order to, to, to achieve returns. First of all, what's the sort of process you've put in place with the GIF to handle that sort of uh, the, the inflows? And secondly, where in the last, say, three months have you been allocating the most uh, capital if we break it across the, the buckets of equity, private equity, property, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Look, the GPF, if you just look at contribution income, we generate about 50 billion per annum income, and then we pay out in benefits about uh, 40, 40 billion. So, so, so on a net basis, you could say that income um, uh, meets uh, what uh, cash outflows, and then we've got an extra 10 billion to invest. Um, and obviously, therefore, it makes you to think more long term about your portfolio of assets. But in terms of uh, how have we been transitioning the portfolio, I think we've been um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, looking at private equity more favorably. And I think last week you guys had a conversation with our investment manager around the three private equity funds that have been established um, and so forth. So we, we like unlisted investments quite a lot. And we think, you know, for a, G for a portfolio of the GPF size, you always need to create new companies, you know, all the time. I mean, if you think about where MTN was 20 years ago and what MTN is today we need to create more MTNs and that's that's the approach that we use and that's why we've got quite a big exposure to to unlisted investments and then also w what is your sectoral <coughs> bias on those unlisted investments look I mean it's uh, I mean it, it's uh, we've got a, a bias towards infrastructure to be quite honest I mean you know we've been punting our four pillar strategy which is economic infrastructure as, well as the first pillar, second pillar is social infrastructure, the third pillar is renewable energy, um, and then the fourth pillar is enterprise development and job creation. So you can see that it's a broad uh, strategy. So we're looking at, I mean, the, the, the recent PPMs that we've been looking at are mainly around economic infrastructure. We know what are the plans from the government side in terms of accelerating infrastructure development in South Africa. You've heard about the transaction that we're involved in in terms of the Lanzaria Airport. So you can see that there's been a bias towards infrastructure and I think this is consistent with what we're seeing globally. I mean, I was reading the OECD report and it's indicating that even in Europe and even in the US, pension funds are looking more uh, attractively towards infrastructure assets because they've got a potential of generating income that can hedge inflation. And then obviously the other sectors that we've been looking at, it's our bond portfolio. We've been uh, trying to transition it to get more inflation-linked bonds. So there also we've been doing well. And I think corporate, corporate debt as well is looking very interesting as part of our bond portfolio. And then also the offshore portfolio. Uh, you remember that uh, we did a good trade. I think that was when at 2010-11, uh, the GPF went offshore for the first time. And uh, we almost feel like geniuses because the rent was 6 rent 50 <laughs> at the time. You know? So that has done extremely Poetic. well. I was just looking at you know, the returns. I mean, we generated just about 39% just on currency movements. And I think from our side, that was just a stroke of a genius. So I think we've been doing quite okay. Well, you know the next question is, where's the RAND going now? <laughs> let's, let's have a little more of that currency genius coming in because a lot of people out there are saying they can't cope with this volatility. Not mm. necessarily the direction one way or another, but they would like a little more certainty. Yeah, I think the previous show that you had here, you had one of the respected economists sitting on the seat. And uh, 
And uh, I mean, to try and focus the rent, I'm not going to try and waste my time. Um, because um, when the rent is strong, we complain. When the rent is weak, we complain. So at the end of the day, somewhere in between, we should be OK. So, um, uh, but I mean, when we looked at our um, uh, uh, views around the rent, we felt then when it was sitting at 650, it was more likely to, you know, to weaken. Uh, where it's sitting at the moment, maybe it's more likely to strengthen a bit. I don't know. But I'm, what I'm saying Anybody's is Anybody's guess. Exactly. Leave guess, it to yeah. the economists. I thought mm. we'd get a little of that genius. John, lots of, lots of mm. doom and gloom about the economy at the moment. We've seen the, the rate mm. of growth slowing down, the rents blown out. Uh, I wanted to just understand from a fiduciary point of view, uh, you have taken the step to start investing assets of, of the fund outside of the country. But in the event that South Africa, for whatever reason, enters into a recession or there's a, um, a lot of uh, volatility in the economy. Um, is, it, is it right to have, and, and this is informed obviously by Regulation 28 and, 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 and the, the rules around pension funds, is it right to have so much of the pension funds assets concentrated in one country when that country as a share of the world's market cap is, is less than 1%? Yeah. So from a fiduciary point of view, uh, is it the right thing to do? Yeah. Look, um, let's put it in this way. The total pension f uh, assets globally are sitting at $28 trillion. Um, the South African pension market is sitting at $200 billion. So in the context of global assets, um, uh, we are very tiny. And the $28 trillion that I've referred to, all of those pension funds, they've got a home bias. And I think it's an issue everywhere globally to say what will be an optimal strategy without constraints. And I think you know, everyone is battling with that because I think the comfort with many people is to try and understand your market and, and everyone understand their domestic market better than I would understand the Thailand market or I would understand the Brazilian market. So there would always be a home bias. So from a, a fiduciary perspective, I think when you look at the GPF portfolio, I think um, it's, 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 it's optimal and we've been transitioning it towards our ideal goal in terms of the allocation. I mean, for example, uh, we've got an approval from the Minister of Finance to invest almost about 5% of the GPF in Africa, excluding South Africa. And we're currently sitting at less than 1%, you know, relative to that 5%. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's not like we are constrained and that we are unable to invest outside South Africa, but to try and transition the portfolio to have the exposure it takes us a while, you know. But and that the 5 home buyers is about 